Hi, my name is Mark Hauser. What is your name? Okay, I'll remember this for later on. But why do we introduce ourselves like this? We could instead, we could say, Hi, I'm from Switzerland. Where are you from? Or we could say, in my case, I could say, Hi, I'm two meters tall. How tall are you? <laughs> but we don't. So I think the name is really essential. Because the name is the proof of our existence. Um, if you are in the jungle and you would discover a small little spider that has never been seen before, then what will you do? You will name that spider. And from there on, the spider will exist for us. Of course, it existed before in the jungle, but not for us. So the name really makes life possible. And I would like to tell you the story when naming really changed my life and to show you how powerful naming really can be. Um, I always wanted to be a superhero and that's very hard when you are a chicken like I am because superheroes, they always fly. And I'm scared of heights and imagine your life at two meters when you are scared every day uh, just by walking around. And so I had to come to a shocking therapy and my shock therapy was skydiving. And so I tried skydiving, but it didn't really work out. So I'm still terrified now to skydive as you see. But I also loved it very much. When we fly like this, we call it tracking. So you fly with your arms and your legs stretch or spread out and you fly forward. You can even fly over cities. And that's an amazing feeling because it's like the Superman, but without the fist in front. So you can just <laughs> fly over the city. Of course, you still fall down because it's free fall. And that's where naming came into play because I decided to break the world record in tracking. And that was easy because there was no world record at this time. <laughs> and so... I had to come up with a name for this new discipline and I called it speed tracking. So maybe it's not very um, creative, but it worked. So I could announce a website, I could find a sponsor and found a, a Swiss watch uh, company to sponsor um, this record. But I had a problem and I found out I was not heavy enough. So then I decided I had to gain weight and I wanted to have around 12 kilos more. And that was one of the best parts of the whole project <laughs> because I could eat everything. So I had eggs and bacon and french fries, hamburgers and two beers uh, for breakfast, of course. <laughs> then I reached 112 kilos at the end and I really made this record possible. So to imagine this, I wanted to be as fast as possible measured over the ground. So I'm flying like this here and I measured the speed over the ground. And to give you an idea of how it works, I can show you the small video of our training. And there you see that I always have to break down a little bit to wait for the other ones to line up and then we can fly again. And we were exiting over the sea and telling the pilot so we will fly home on our own. And that's what you will see.
I'd like to talk about naming now because flying is not everyone's uh, thing. So, um, in creative naming, I'm running a naming agency and we come up with names for brands, for companies, for products. And the clients, they always tell me, so Mr. Hauser, you are the creative one and uh, that's good for business, they believe. Um, but I'm sure it's not true. I think we are all creative human beings. And I would like to do an experiment with you. Uh, you have this white sheet of paper and your red pen. And we will draw a picture. And the picture is a portrait of your neighbor at your right side or at your left side, on your left hand side. <laughs> the only problem is you don't start now and you only have 30 seconds to complete this portrait of your name. So, please, at my signal. Ready, set, and go. Thank you very much. Great job. Thank you. Please show the pictures to your neighbor. <laughs> Thank you. If you do this experiment in kindergarten, then the results are completely different than in here. I've heard some excuses, so sorry, that's not really you, sorry, I'm not the big artist. Um, if you do this in kindergarten, um, you maybe have a little girl that draws an animal, like a horse, and this girl draws this horse with five heads and 26 colors, and you're asking this girl, oh, that's nice. Um, what's the name of your cat? And the girl replies, Hey, that's Lulu. That's Lulu, my cat. Don't you see it? So it's, it's not a horse, it's, it's really my cat. And so they mix, not as I do, but they just name their creations. And they have the courage to name their pictures. And we lose this capacity. So we don't say, that's you, just have a look. No, we say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's not you. And I think we have to rediscover this capacity to name our creations, to name our ideas, even to name our dreams. And that's very important. Who knows the band Johnny and the Moondogs? Okay, and they played here some years ago. And maybe you know the Beatles. So, they changed their names, uh, they renamed and named, renamed uh, over and over again, and finally we all know the Beatles. But the name Johnny and the Moon Dogs was really essential for the beginning of their career, because otherwise they could not um, start the career. Uh, I was, for example, a guitar player of a rock band in the 80s, um, and we were very, very famous. Uh, we toured around the world, um, at least in my imagination. Uh, but, uh, we never came to the stage where we named the band, which is called the band. So we could not even sign the demo tapes uh, writing us. And maybe this would be a, a name like uh, U2, it's not, it's us. But uh, so I'm not the guitar player um, um, as I could be, maybe, but I was not talented anyway. So um, it's important to name our dreams. That's very important. Sometimes we hear, one day I will write a book, or one day I will open a restaurant. But I'm sure that that doesn't work like this. So we should really come up with a name. For example, if you would like to open a restaurant and the only thing you can cook in French cuisine is omelette, then why, you don't, why don't you call it omelette? Then you have the O, you have 
with all the yolks you can make the omelets with all the ingredients in it and then you have this picture you have even a logo and then you can write a menu then you can start so the name really brings life into your project and that's really essential so don't say one day i will open the restaurant just name it from the beginning it's not essential to find the right name from the beginning but to name it that's essential and when creativity comes into play again, I would like to play something with you. Uh, you all have these small little golden items, and as I'm from Switzerland, we have some gold uh, back there. Not too much anymore after this event, but you all have these gold plates. And we will play a new game that you have never played before. And the name of the game is Flying Gold Tennis, uh, which means we take the well-known part of tennis player Roger Federer, we take the gold of the Swiss bank accounts, of course, and we take the flying I was uh, discussing before. And we mix it all up, that's what creativity is. We take well-known parts, we mix it up in a new way, and we play around. And so please, take all your little golden devices, there are 24 carats, real, pure gold, and you try to blow underneath the gold, and to keep the gold into the air, here in this room. As long as you hear the music. Okay, please. mistakes, we make errors, and that's the way creativity really can flourish. And when I came into this naming business, that was um, in hospital, actually. We have been there for three days. Um, it was the birthday of our first daughter. Um, maybe I should call it the birth week, uh, because we have been there for days and nights and days and nights, uh, because she, she really didn't want to pop out. And when she finally arrived, she had such a low score on her survival checklist, so we have, we have been all really desperate, and I had to give her the oxygen she needed, but she was pale and her eyes were closed, and she was not really alive. And when I was desperate enough, I really cried her name, and I said, Noel! And then she opened her eyes, and, and she was there. So, you can call it a coincidence, uh, but it was the same with our second daughter, with Simon. She had exactly the same birth um, horror, and when she arrived, and when she heard her name, she was there. So, please, to let me wrap up this for you. I wish you the courage to dream the big dream, and I wish you the courage to believe in your own creativity, and, first of all, I wish you the courage to name your dreams. <laughs>